Hey everybody, what's going on? Jerome here, and welcome to an awesome episode of Shell Shock Live. A little bit of an extended one here today, and today we're doing things a little bit different. Instead of commentating much about the game, we're actually going to be hopping in and talking straight about the best and worst games of 2016. That's right, we figured what a way to start off 2017 and talking about all the things that made gaming so special from last year. So guys, what was your favorite games of 2016? I know, Alex, you were pretty well versed in the gaming field, so I know you probably uh, have a well, couple opinions. Well, for me, my top 10, or not top game of 2016 is definitely Overwatch. Yeah, uh, that was honestly a great game. I, Overwatch, I, it yeah. came out, and it surprised me. I, I didn't play it when it first came out, but the hype was so real. Like, everybody on Twitter was like, Overwatch is like, you know. Overwatch this, Overwatch that. I was like, I don't know. I played a lot of Dota and stuff like that. And then I played it. And first impression was, this is so much fun. Yeah, it's like a yeah. new take. Because if you guys know what League of Legends or Dota, that's those are MOBAs. So it's like a multiplayer online battle arena. But this is like an FPS MOBA. So it was pretty cool to see something like that. Yeah, honestly, I thought it was very fun and unique, and I'm not going to lie, when it first came out, same thing, I didn't really play it much. Uh, it wasn't until about, like, two weeks ago, so pretty much the end of 2016, I gave it a try, because uh, you, you kind of told me to play it, and I, I love it. I, think it was, I was very shocked. Uh, it's definitely not, like, my normal style of game, but I totally fell in love with it, so I was pretty happy with that. It's definitely right. an, an interesting <laughs> concept of a game to bring, like, a MOBA mixed with an FPS. Right. I mean, it's, it's just... It seems like a game that's done before, but it's never been done Because what before, people were like, sense. okay, this is just a copy of Team Fortress 2 because of the game modes. But then what they didn't think about was the fact that there are so many different classes and there are ultimates that player, uh, like heroes have. So ultimate abilities just change the game. It's so, it's so awesome. It's so much fun. would recommend. That's definitely my favorite game of 2016. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. You guys, uh, two to your Ben. Do you have any like favorite games from 2016 so, or anything? Yeah, like my that? my favorite game of 2016 has to be Dark Souls Three because really? I, Dark Souls Three is easily my favorite game. I am a huge fan of the Dark Souls series, and Dark Souls Three, which is the final game in the trilogy, kind of capping off Dark Souls, was just a perfect way to end it. Beautiful graphics, beautiful mechanics, beautiful gameplay a beautiful story just a very well done and designed game with so much replayability to it right so okay and I what had... was i've never played dark souls so what, what was that exactly about like i know so, it's bad to say but I what would it the no, story no, for the story for dark souls yeah so basically it's kind of set in a futuristic setting um kind of hard to explain like you know like dragons uh, uh, and... it, it's weird dark souls is a game that you can play even if you don't really pay attention to the story because the the main thing about the the game and why dark souls has such an awesome fan base is it's really difficult very uh, like uh precise gameplay and it really challenges you in like a way that many other games don't really do because a lot of games have been getting easier and i think everybody knows that but dark souls is like nah we're gonna destroy oh. it. Oh, GG, by the way, guys. That was a round. <laughs> well, we're just gonna keep on free flowing. Anyone have any ideas for a round? You guys wanna do like Marksman? Sure. Yeah, yeah, let's do Marksman. Marksman's nice. Marksman's nice. <coughs> Marksman's that's, always good. That's the thing with Dark Souls, is the game is extremely difficult, but it's not where it's not impossible. But it's not impossible. Yeah. Once you understand the game and you get good at mechanics and dodging and everything you can play through the game yeah. rather easily it's a skill based yeah game. exactly and it makes you think like okay uh, a lot of these games have become so fast paced and so like in your face and this one's like slow down read your enemies movements and it's so mechanically like amazing it's it's a game you should definitely play if you like difficult gameplay exactly yeah. no okay fair enough fair enough i'll have to give it a try ben okay. i was going to say i've never played any of the Dark Souls myself either. Uh, favorite game of the year, Planet Coaster. Absolutely oh, amazing game. That, that nice. stuck in there too. Was that late November or December? That was like late November. That, that stuck because, in there. That was good. Yeah, yeah because Rollercoaster Tycoon had such like a big hype until it came out in Alpha. And then everybody's like, oh no, what are they doing? So when Planet Coaster was announced, I'm going to miss this. What are you going to miss? Ben, oh, no. ben. Ben, how? Ben. How? Ben, it's a direct shot, bud. Ben. I, I, 
Troy. <laughs> Why did I do it? You put... <laughs> oh, God, this one's going to be real tough for me. Oh, great. So, so Planet Coaster. Okay. Yeah, um, so Planet let Coaster. me just go over the list of games that came out for you guys. If you guys are not so, too well versed. Well, wait, um, before you do, I got to say the one, my, my favorite. Oh, one. yeah, that's right. You didn't oh, answer yeah. before. Battlefield 1. I'm just going to go out there. I know that's a cheap Ooh. one because everyone probably thinks that. I loved Battlefield 1. Like, what a great game. It was just well-polished, graphically appealing, uh, balanced weapons, balanced sides as well. Even though, like, you know, it's, you know, obviously the terrain is different on each side. The goal and the objective is different on each side. But it just feels balanced. Like, I really enjoyed it. I really did. So, Battlefield 1 for sure is my favorite. Nice. That is a very good game. I played the uh, beta of that when it was... Uh... It, it's definitely cool to yeah. see a boots-on-the-ground uh, shooter after all yeah. these space games we've been getting. And, oh. I mean, there, I'm sure there have been plenty of other ones out there that I just literally... I have no idea, but to my <clears> knowledge, <throat> I, I think it's genuinely the best World War One game. I don't know of any other World War One games, really. So. Uh, well, I mean, Call of Duty World at War. World at, World at War was World War Two, man. Was it? I mean, it's been so long since I played it. Uh, well, we're talking about 2016 games here. Yeah, no. Let's not no. get off track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, so, well, and actually, going talking about <laughs> phenomenal games in 2016, you can't forget about. Well, I mean, I'm sure this is kind of slipped under the radar. It has for a lot of people. An indie game released called Owlboy. Also, that was uh, a shot. Owlboy guys... has I... been going around as one of the best indie games released in a long time what, what is, is it? so owlboy <laughs> is a i guess it's like a retro 2d platformer game. it's a platformer with a beautiful story yeah so it had a beautiful gameplay story graphics just pleasing to the eye and it just gives you almost a sense of nostalgia to play it you're you get nostalgia while playing it for the first time almost which is mm. a really weird feeling but super awesome at the same time Ooh. that was a good shot by the way guys i've been cool. i haven't finished the game but i've been playing through it and just loving every minute of it All right well it's actually cool. a really different art style for this you know generation of games Exactly. Right. Let me, exactly. Let me Google this real quick. I'm actually curious yeah, did myself. You, yeah, no. Okay, I actually okay. did a video nope. on it. Did you? Yeah, I did. I did a video. Oh. On it. <laughs> yeah, I did a video. All right. Oh, man. So the, I oh. think that's definitely a, an, a, a game that you should all play. If you guys like stories or indie games, Oh Boy is a great game. But now, guys, we've been talking about our favorites, but let's talk about the worst games that have come out in 2016. Uh, I think uh, by far, every single person like here was probably very disappointed. I just want to say thank you to Blue Apron as well for sending me the product for free to try out so I can tell you guys a little bit more about it. The great part about Blue Apron is that they use high quality ingredients so that you can enjoy. I personally love Blue Apron. The food tastes fantastic, it's easy to make, and just believe me, it just makes cooking a lot simpler. My favorite parts about Blue Apron is that not only is it affordable, but they also give you a nice variety of different foods to try from. Another cool thing about it is that it's really, really easy to make the food that they provide you with, and not only that, they're flexible. You can actually create different types of meals based on your preferences so that each week you're getting something that really fits your food palette. Not only that, but Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every single ingredient upon delivery is ready to cook, or else they'll make it right. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free Free, with free shipping by going to blueapron.com backslash Jerome and Ryan. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash Jerome and Ryan. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. With you can guess it. Alex, you want to take it away, bud? No Man's Sky. Oh, see, no. I didn't have to say I love it. I didn't have to say it. I, will, I honestly, I do have one that I was very disappointed with. Uh, I will say that after we get all this. So, Ben, you were really, really excited for No Man's Sky. Why did it yeah. disappoint you? So, No Man's Sky from the beginning looked amazing when they promised multiplayer across such a large, you know, selection of worlds and places to visit. But I think without it, it just failed. But yeah. I will say it is it's definitely redeemed itself recently in my books. Yeah, I know they have pushed a lot of updates, but a lot of people are saying it's a little too late, but they have fixed it. It's just oh that those of you guys who don't know yeah. what No Man's Sky is, is it promised it was like endless hours of gameplay exploration to your heart's content. But literally what it ended up becoming was 
hey, travel this planet, collect some minerals to travel, to go to the next planet, and then rinse and repeat. So but you weren't doing anything. Um, on top of that, it also seems like the planet never actually looped round. <clears throat> right. It just seemed like it was like an endless, you know, sandbox yeah. world that you were in. It never actually looped around to the place you first started. Yeah, like started. Mario yeah, Galaxy actually... style. Yeah, it wasn't actually a world you were traveling around in. And I think they really, they had the great idea, but kind of missed them up. Yeah, that takes out of the immersion. And uh, not only that, though, it wasn't just like us being disappointed. I think it's safe to say most people were very disappointed. It was because... the entire gaming community was just as disappointed to the point where Steam actually refunded purchases of No Man's Sky. Well, not only that, but it, it also, if you look into it Aww. a little bit, hey, I finally won. That was a long round. That was a good wow. one right there. Yeah, but but uh, I, I did some research into it as well. I don't know if you guys knew, but it actually fell under investigation by uh, Britain's, what is it called here? Advertising Standards. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. For false advertising, because that, that's how crazy different it was. Uh, I'm putting on rebound mode, by the way. So for those who don't know how to play, rebound mode is when you have to hit a barrier first, and then you can do damage. Otherwise, it does zero damage right. every time. Um, but no, apparently, it, they they there's some idea that they might have falsely advertised it. I don't want to say either way because, you know, yeah. there's like a lawsuit mm. around. I'm not going to get you know. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, apparently, they're under investigation for false advertising. Yeah. So, now, yeah. Uh, another game I was kind of disappointed in um and this came out earlier this year, and I was excited for it. I, I was like, this is a new game I haven't seen in gameplay. I haven't seen this type of thing done before. But it was Tom Clancy's The Division by Ubisoft. No! Oh, oh. it was so bad. I, well, was, I thought I, I heard I, it was okay. It was... Okay, so I did I did a video with it with Choco the Chocobo on my channel, Elixir Craft, Elixir Craft or Alex Ace, one of the two. Um, and I was really excited, because this game is like... <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jerome, I am dead. Bye, Alex. <laughs> but um, it was based <laughs> off of, like, you have a team, you have to do these missions. It's, like, really cool abilities, all that fun stuff. But when it came down to it, it was literally, like, here's a, here's a gun that does the most damage. Go shoot this bullet sponge, rinse, repeat, and go collect some stuff. It, 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 it got repetitive, and the whole point of the co-op was really fun. But then they added something called the Dark Zone, which was something where you can go in and do f PvP with players. But there was literally no point of doing PvP with players because if you did that, you were marked as a target and everybody would come to kill you. So then it just made sense to do more co-op in the Dark Zone. So they just messed up the entire release. And they you literally... You a lot to say about yeah, this game. Sorry, sorry. This no, is, no, this no, is no the problem with it. Just, this just is saying, the thing that took the cake. By. So when the game first came out, there was a literal virtual line when you got oh, on the servers. No. Virtu a, a virtual line people made to play the game. Because what happens is when you turn it on, right. you get put into a tutorial room and you have to talk to a guy to let you play the game. But Ubisoft thought it was a good idea to only let one person be able to talk to the NPC at a time. So we had, if you had 100 yeah. people on a server, you had to make a line for 99 people as people had to come and talk to the NPC one It was like one. a nine hour line. Oh. From what I yeah, heard. so people were saying, I bought the game three hours ago, I haven't played it yet because I haven't been able to get on the servers. Yeah, so. it's that bad. Okay, so I stand corrected. Maybe this game wasn't as good as I heard. But, uh... but I mean, they've fixed a lot of things. They've done a lot of good stuff, but I was just burnt out. I was just like, mm. no, fair enough. So a game that maybe have actually slipped your mind because you might not be considering a game, but I, I would call it a game that was released in 2016, which actually had the entire world out and about. Would be Pokemon Go. We oh, oh wow. that it, guys. that's a I good one. Yeah, no, I can't believe we didn't think of that. Go for it, Tuni. I mean, what is there to tell? Pokemon Go, for I, those that you don't know, yeah. is a, a game about Pokemon that encouraged people to be up and about, to, to get up, go outside, go explore the world. And attempts to find Pokemon, and it had the entire I to fair enough to say almost the entire world crazy for a period of time. Yeah, I mean but, to be fair, I will say this about Pokemon Go: it it was a great game when it came out. It 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 made like I think like a humongous percent increase of people going outside, exercising, um, walking around, making friends. But then okay, so as a 
as like a lifestyle thing, amazing, great game, great you know thing. As a game, kind of sucks. <laughs> kinda, yeah. it, 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 the, after a while, you collect all the Pokemon, um, and you're just like, okay. Well, the biggest reason people were disappointed was the the updates took forever to come out. From what I hear, like, it, it was like and wow. also just the, the lack of the lack of um, feedback from. Niantic. There's so many oh. bugs, glitches. Your map wouldn't work half the time. If you were catching a Pokemon, it could freeze, and then you're just like, okay, well, I just lost a super rare Pokemon. Um, mm -hmm. It was just mm -hmm. very discouraging for like completionists, essentially. And I can I can tell if we talk to Lachlan, who's a Pokemon Go expert, he could probably be like, oh my god, yes. But it's the biggest yeah, thing. Oh, I almost that a lot of. That a lot of uh, game companies do need to remember these days is their response to the fans is the biggest thing. You yeah, can't exactly. just release a game and not talk about updates or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Now, one game that might have slipped your mind drone that came out this year, and I was expecting you to actually play this game, was Gears of War 4. Uh, you know, I played Gears of Wars 1, 2, and 3. I loved the franchise. I don't know why I never played Gears of War 4, to be honest with you. It was uh, probably just an oversight on my part. I'll definitely go back and give it a go. But, yeah, no, I, I'm a big fan of the Gears of War franchise, so I definitely got to give it a go. But for me, yeah. the, the only problem I had with it is I didn't do enough research into what it really was about. But I'll say this much, I'm the kind of person when like a story's over, it's kind of over. And the impression I got from like Gears of War 3, it was kind of, you know, like we're kind of wrapped up here, you know? And mm -hmm. then it seems like they just kept it going. Uh, I mean, it is a fun game. It's a good franchise. But they did the same thing with Halo. And Halo is my all-time favorite franchise ever, period. Like just no and or buts. But they did the same thing with that, uh, with Halo 4 back in the day, Halo Reach. And I lost interest right after Halo 3 because i was like no the story's over we're done we're done so so you know for me like when a story's done it's done um i'll still go i'll probably go back and give it a try i'm not gonna lie but right. I, I definitely wasn't as enthusiastic as you'd think because of it yeah um, but that's just my take on it i don't no, know Maybe, what do you guys think about games like that like do you guys like when a game like i i no. get it no like, no definitely not because there there have been games that you know Oh, geez. That you had you had a story finish. It was amazing, and then they're like, "Here's another one." You're like, w "What?" You're like, "Why?" And I mean, I, we all know why they're making another game. We don't have to say it, um, but it's just it's it's kind of like a kick in the face to true like fans because you're just like, "Okay, well now the now they're adding all this nonsense when they had a perfectly good ending, ending. to a game." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, fair. Is anyone? I mean. A couple of games, though, that I kind of slipped under the radar, too, almost like an indie game style. One, Super Hot. I, I think that oh. is a beautiful concept of a I've game. I've never even oh. heard of Super Hot. It's, it's an really amazing drone. indie it game. It is one of the most, like, cool ideas. So the object, the idea of Super Hot is it's a first-person shooter, but time only moves when you when move. When you move, yeah. So if you don't move, time around you, everything doesn't move. It's but slow, slow you, motion, yeah. Yeah, That's slow cool. motion. But when you start moving, everything around you moves. So you have, like, your gun, and you're like, okay, there's a guy there, there, there. So you, like, shoot, 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 and then you move, and you can, like, watch the bullets go. It is a beautiful game to play. That actually I, does I remember, sound pretty cool. Exactly. I remember playing the demo of it. The demo of it. The 15-minute demo of it for hours. Because yeah, it, 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 it yeah, feels it like you're was. like a movie star in like the Matrix or something. Because you're like, okay, there's a bullet coming from the left. I can pick up this guy's gun after I punch him, shoot the guy exactly. over here, and it's like exactly. crazy. Exactly, beautiful. That was fun. That's, and I can imagine it sounds like a kind of game where like you might play the same level like ten times just to perfect it. Yeah, exactly. Just to yeah. see how well you could do. But um, I, one game that definitely disappointed me as a uh, football or soccer fan was FIFA 17. Oh, um, no. The reason I, being the is there were no real differences. Obviously, all the players got updated, whatever. But it was literally just like, okay, we've got a new skin. Um, the only thing they really added was the single player. But as someone who plays a soccer game or football game, depending on where you're from, um, I'm not playing it for the, the story. I want to be playing as like Cristiano Ronaldo as one of the best players in the world. And it's impossible to play as him against real people because you have to buy packs. It's one of those games where you have to buy packs. Oh, okay. And 
uh it's been con like it, it's just like any fifa player will tell you how difficult it is to actually unbox one of those types of heroes uh heroes sorry i'm thinking overwatch uh <laughs> uh players sorry hey, so some it, of them it was, might be heroes they, they, you yeah know, yeah heroes players. to you guys but uh, it's just a little uh disappointing yeah um, and i wish they did a little bit more I mean, yeah. No way! No, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I know we've been like completely ignoring the gameplay, but that was the coolest thing. <laughs> that, <laughs> sorry, that, that was that, that was, was a good shot. One. one game that's come out that I haven't gotten my hands on to play yet, but I I want to so badly is Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Actually, who, who as a kid played Mirror's Edge? I was gonna say I didn't even know they made a new one, but I'm excited. See, they're, that's they're just, actually uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna step in right here. That has been on a lot of people's worst games of the year. No, Re no. Reason Don't being, that. reason being, the gameplay was very. There wasn't really much chat. It was almost like was, there wasn't really too much. It was very, like, the first game was amazing. It should have ended as it was, but like the next game, like a lot of people, I haven't even played it yet, but I'm just going from what people said. Um, a lot of people are speculating the reason why no one knew it came out was EA knew the game wasn't that great. Um, but let, let us know in the comments if you played it, what you think about it. Um, okay. But if you guys didn't know, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, a lot of fans didn't even know it came out. It didn't, they didn't even know it came out um, because it came out right before E3. And so no one's going to care about it because they're like, all oh, these new games are coming. You know? Right, right. But have you played it yet, Tootie? No, that's I. I want to play it, but I just I haven't played it yet. Yeah, so. but I mean, also, yeah. Let's, uh, not not to just randomly chime in, but we were talking about really bad games of 2016, and I just remembered one. No, what? what is it? The worst game, Mario Run. Oh, Super oh, Mario Run. Run? I don't yeah. know if that was like, I mean, no, I... that was. Oh no, it was terrible. No. You really, you think so, Ben? No, I mean, yeah. Mm, that's debatable. I, 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 as a true Nintendo fan, I like what they were doing because there's a lot of kids who, because the way it is, or the way I like about it is, of course, the gameplay isn't what we like. Um, it's weird, all that fun stuff. But think about it from someone from a perspective of a kid who can't afford like a $200 uh, 3DS and like, you know, he's like, I want to play a Mario game. I can get this game for free. And if I want to get the level packs, all I have to do is pay like 10 bucks. Like that's pretty cool to me. Um, uh, that especially. Is, that is true. Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. As someone, but as someone who's a fan and play every game, yes, it's, it's really weird. I don't like it. Yeah. Whatever. But as a kid, whoever, like, if I can't buy a 3DS or something, I, I can play this new Mario on my phone. I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and especially it's different. I, dip, I think it's different for us too because we're at our desks all day. As someone who probably, maybe even like adults who work on like, you know, at retail, they're like, hey, I'm on my break. Let me just play some Mario for like five minutes. Right. Yeah. That's true. Nope. Yeah. I mean, I'm not Very much true. of a mobile gamer, so I guess I can't really. Yeah. Even and speaking of mobile, we kind of forgot a big title. Pokemon Sun and Moon. Oh, jeez. Right. Pokemon Sun Pokemon. and Moon. Oh. I, I, I actually haven't gotten it. It was like on my top to-do list to get. Never ended up getting it, and I really, I'm really i disappointed with myself because I'm a huge Pokemon fan. Yeah. Now, I, a lot of people I, yeah. were like a little skeptical cause, or skeptical um, because they didn't have, like, they have a lot of things changed. There weren't any gyms. There was no, like, Elite Four. Wait, what are you talking like, about, Willis? What do you mean there's no gyms? Like, here? there's different things. There's trials, not gyms. And there's, like, you know, Z moves were introduced. You know, so much new stuff. But honestly, I think people are starting to, like, grow to love this game. Wait, why? Wait, okay, but why are there no gyms? Why is the gym? Well, well there's trials. It's, like, the same thing. But it's, it's just, but, but yeah. It's, but it's not the same thing. But it's not the same thing. But it, the thing that I really liked about this game, Jerome, I mean, I've I've seen a lot of gameplay, and like my my girlfriend's been playing, it, she loves it. Is it reminds me of Pokemon Coliseum? Oh, the, the now maybe that's a game I would play. I love Pokemon because Coliseum. now there's like it feels like I'm playing that on a mobile device. Okay. Okay. Nice. So I think that's what's really cool. Now, Jerome, I haven't played this game a lot. And I know you have, and it came out this year, so I think this is a very good thing to ask of what your impression is about it. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. 
Oh. 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 Let's uh, not. Moving uh, on. Uh, honestly, <laughs> um, the, zomb the zombies. Uh, I'll talk about the zombies mode. I'll leave the multiplayer to speak for itself. Uh, <laughs> the but but the zombies mode. I was very pleasantly surpri su surprised. Surprised. Uh, surprised with Spaceland. Uh, just because of the fact that it, it really gave me. It had some newer uh, mechanics, sure, but it gave me some of the vibes of like the older zombies. I was a big fan of zombies back in World at War and Black Ops One. And then they just went and they took their own franchise and they just <laughs> they just ruined a good yeah. thing when Black Ops 2 came out. I'm sorry. I know so many people like that map Transit. No, that ruined a good thing. It didn't need it. It wasn't necessary. Yeah, um, I didn't like that map. So I, yeah, I was very I was just very sad about what they did. Um, that being said, I feel like it brought back a lot of the old vibe while still adding in some new mechanics that weren't like really like life changing to the game, and that's what I liked about it. Um, but yeah, so overall that was great. The multiplayer, like I said, uh, yeah, it speaks for, it speaks for itself. It's right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, good player. It's Hold a on. game that exists. Um, yep. All right. And uh, no. oh, um, and also that came with it though was uh, of course the Modern Warfare Remaster. No, oh. <laughs> my heart will stop there. <laughs> um. But you know, Modern Warfare Remastered, really cool, great idea. I'm yeah, glad they I've it I've seen. Um, if you guys don't know Hutch, a very classic YouTuber, he's awesome. I've seen a lot of his gameplay on it. Honestly, the remastered looks beautiful. They've done a great job. It's awesome. That's like the only reason you should pick up the game, <laughs> besides zombies, of course. Well, like I say, you know the infinite <laughs> multiple. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the campaign. Yeah. Now, uh, weird question. We weird. I'm gonna bring this up. But Blade, are you still here? I know you're in our Discord chat. Oh wow, we're throwing it <laughs> a third party all of a sudden. I know, no, no. But the reason <laughs> being is there's a game that came out this year that Blade has. Uh, he told me all about. It yeah, and he loved it. I was. And it's I was. Just Final just... Fantasy 15. Ooh. I actually, that's when I got my brother for Christmas, and okay, he's it... not here, so that that's not. Oh. Cool. <laughs> but uh, Final Fantasy 15 came out, and it, it it I guess those of you guys are Final Fantasy fans. Um, it has been very mixed, but true Final Fantasy fans love it. Oh no! New Final yeah, like, other fans are like, eh, did your brother like it? Mm-hmm. He did. So okay, far, good. he's loved it because um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Final Fantasy movies, but they are beautiful. And then, uh, and yeah, this game is gorgeous. Yeah, true, true, very true. No. What, what about though? Want to kind of throw out a game there? Have any of you guys tried no. the very much anticipated Dishonored 2? No. No. No? no? I've seen no. gameplay, and I think it looks great. I just have never played it. I've never had a t t time to. I mean, mm. there's so many great games that come out every year, but there is only so much time in yeah. a year to play it. That, like, that's there's... the problem, too, yeah. is most games nowadays, and rightfully so, they, they get you really invested in them. Like, you have to kind of pick your battles. You can't exactly. play yeah. them all. Or at least exactly. you can't devote a lot of time to all of them. Exactly. So, I guess, I, I got a question. Obviously, big X, you know, big, big titles come out all the time, and they're $70, you know, to buy. Now, how do you, how would you feel spending $70 on a game like Call of Duty versus a game like, uh, what game was good this year? Planet Coaster. Like, I, I mean... Guess what the thing is, is that it's that's kind of a hard question to ask because, as as someone who I'm very well versed in the game in, in gaming culture, I always do my research. I watch videos, reviews. Like mm -hmm. if I see a game, for example, um, I'm trying to think of a title that came out this year. Uh, Street Fighter Five came out this year. I love fighting games. Uh, I love fighting games so much, but Street Fighter Five, it was very like. Oh. I don't know. It wasn't something I, I thought I would need, and, and someone I don't feel like paying sixty dollars to play a game that I only probably play an hour a week. So yeah, I think it's okay. nowadays it's very hard to choose whether or not I want to buy a title, uh, a new game because, um, oh jeez, just man, being I'm so sorry, busy, buddy. yeah, just being so busy as, a, as, a, as doing what we do. Um, but I think that's that's a good thing though for people who have time to play games because they're like okay. Look at all these reviews. Look at all these YouTubers playing this game. They love it. I, I'm going to love it, too. 
Not oh, uh, that did not bounce the way I thought it would. Um, that's embarrassing. So, so talking about uh, worst games of 2016, uh, Alex, do you know want to talk a little bit about us? Uh, apparently, Star Fox Zero. <laughs> okay. Oh. I love Star Fox 64. It's a beautiful game. Play it, please, if you if you love it. Star Fox Zero looked so good. I was like, the development looks amazing. And then they made you use the Wii U control set, a broken <laughs> oh, no. And then you're just like, well, this game is not fun anymore because the controls are way too hard to learn. If you can learn the controls, this game's great. It's awesome. But I just can't redeem the fact about how freaking hard the controls are when you're trying to use this big goofy tablet it, it's just not it, it's not viable I, I i i'm sorry star fox i love you man but i can't well anyway everybody that is all we have time for today but let us know down in the comment section do you agree with our choices here do you disagree what games did you like that we chose or anything like that just, just let us know what do you think what were your favorite games and your least favorite games of 2016 uh and also if you want to comment down below letting us know what games you're looking forward to in 2017 so yeah apart from that though everybody thank you so much for joining us we hope you all enjoyed this video and of course stay tuned for next